Hello and welcome to a video dealing with the flares on um, the Scott lenses. Now I have covered this um, in one or two of my previous videos just about stripping these down and what I do but I've had people going could you tell us I do it all and I've been going leave me alone I have things to do I have a busy life <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm giving in and I'm going to try and do this and show you how I go about it. I, I mean I do it, I've done this fairly often recently but I kind of don't like the pressure of having to do it on video, I kind of like to do it in my own time kind of thing. It's, it's, it's quite it's quite chilled out when you're, uh, you're under no pressure, less chilled out when you're doing it on video. So um, with these typical um, scope lenses in this kind of style, so your Sankar and your Kawa, uh, yeah, Iki and, and all the clones, um, they all look you know, like this, so you, you've got your uh, front element and it focuses and then there's the rear element and there we go, straight forward. Um, now this actually is a Sankor 16C clone, the uh, Cine Pro, so this is my first one uh, of these. Um, to me, uh, looking at it, I can't see anything different than the Sankor, so it might just be exactly the same and it'd be bad for all I know. Um, but we'll open it up and see if there's any surprises, I doubt it. But so, at the top you have one, two, three screws, so I'm going to take those out with a small screwdriver. As I mentioned before, make sure your screwdriver fits exactly. If you try and get something that isn't quite right fitted, you're just going to end up damaging um, the screws and you give yourself a, a world of pain. Um, so just get the right tools. If you haven't got them, and when you start this, go and get them bought. I'm afraid I don't, and some of these tools I've just picked out because I know they fit and uh, I don't know the exact measurements myself, otherwise I would put it in the description, but, but if I can figure any of them out I'll put it in, but this is basically just a, you won't be able to see that for the camera focus, but it's just a tiny jewelry screwdriver, flathead, which I think they also call slotted, possibly, that's what I've seen online anyway, so, and uh, I'm starting off with the first problem of if I could do it a screw and it's on camera, it always ends up being considerably more fiddly than it would be if I wasn't filming it. So this one doesn't want to turn. You do need, when you're screwing, to press down with some force, um, especially with old screws that haven't been turned for many a decade, um, just to make sure that you're not slipping. You don't, you don't want to be damaging the threads and sliding about the top of the screw. This one's, this one's coming out. I'll probably speed this up in post because otherwise it'll be very, very tedious. Oh, that's all. I managed to lose them enough where they're not actually uh, holding it on, so I'm going to just unscrew it. But I definitely going to want to get those out. After. What I like to do, this just me personally, especially when I'm going to work on this for a little while, is just get off the original grease because someone's got just gloopy and gunky and it's got dirt in. So, what I'll do, because I'm going to put all this back together at the end, I'll, I'll re grease it, but it's just it's horrible, mucky colour. I think, you know, it probably gets dust and wine dying over the years some of these more exterior bits and not so pleasant so right I shall place this somewhere safe and I'm just going to wipe off some of the rest of the grease around here if you, gonna, you don't necessarily have to do this by the way because you might just want to get in work with it and then put it back together but I just think it's Virtually nearly impossible not just get gunk everywhere and and not get it on the fucking material and, and not get any lenses and whatever else. So personal advice, get rid of it and put some new grease on when you're done. So yeah, it's a bit more expense because you'll have to buy that as well. Um, 
But if you are going to take it apart and show it some care, then you might as well consider that as one of the costs of doing so. So with the front taken off, you can just unscrew the focus ring directly off the back and it comes away. So again, that's going to be covered in grease. You, you probably know why I'm just leaving a bit that's on the rails there, because you're not going to be handling this. It's not like you're going to get it everywhere. I'm just going to remove it just from the bottom area there, just because it was looking really grubby and unclean. And obviously that's one of the bits where it's up and down the exterior, so it would have had many a sweaty fingerprint and dust and whatever else. Um, it's usually quite um, gloopy and messy uh, around here, so again, for my, for my purposes, I'm getting rid. I've not seen that before. Actual uh, number carved in. Somewhat cleaner one two. Oh, so this is um. Yes, the, yeah. This is this is like the uh, Sankar and the E key, in that you've got um, one two of these tabs. Um, on the cowards, you tend to have a, a third tab as well. Um, what I'm going to do, as I mentioned before, I mean you can tell by looking through it at the end if you don't do this, but I like to just mark against the uh, focus line and here before I take it apart, just so if I want to put it back exactly I mean this will never be exact exact I mean you're still going to have to line up visually and whatnot. Uh, but you see it's just a, it's a, it's a quick dropping it in a place straight off uh, I've got a few screwdrivers here for dealing with these tabs um, again with these being in um, for decades they can, they, they can be really frustrating screws to deal with um, so fingers crossed. On the face of it, these looking in good nick and are quite nice deep threads. But I was dealing with some uh, brass ones out of a camera today, and yeah, two of them decided to give me a really hard time. By the way, if you are working on screws. And yeah, I'm putting them forward and I've got a nice size screwdriver, it's working well. Um, but if you do have problems where it's uh, slipping about and uh, you end up wearing the threads, please, please, please don't put them back in and give someone else the misery of it later. Um, replace, um, replace the screws with new ones. Um, I think they're uh, uh, M2.5 by 4, but... Um, I'll confirm with the ones I, I've used, but I have bought uh, a pack of replacements. Um, uh, nice and flat heads at the top, you know, very similar to the originals. Uh, oops, yep, yeah, don't know if you can see that, but um, but the ones I get are a, a, a cross head. Just makes the life a bit easier when you if you ever need to take them out in the future. Well, I think I think you get a bit more grip with the cross head over a slotted one like this. But so these screws are actually all right. So these these could just go straight back in, and I wouldn't be too worried about them. Actually, I could just pull this out and then. Tap that out. Oh, the top end actually, it's, uh, it grips a bit more. If you slide it down to here and push it out, it's a little easier. Uh, this is all gunked up. You'll find, obviously, for the inside focus to be smoothly, you've got um, grease all around this, and that that presses against all the inside here as well. So, all the initial part in here is greased. You, you, if you feel inside there, there this is kind of a bit more of a grooved shape. It's normally greased up to that point but not beyond. But I'm just, so I'm just going to clean that out. So my preference is to put uh, flocking material in. Obviously it's up to you whether you, you paint these or flop them. Uh, I mean my concern with paint and actually, uh, what I would say is, is for the. Actually, I'm going to swipe this first, and I'll show you. Obviously, for this distance here, 
that's going to sit in the barrel to, to that height so um, if you were to paint any of that um, this rubbing up and down could break the paint and flake it and obviously if you've got fucking material uh, it, it, you know it, it may or may not go over it I find generally it actually will it still slide about um, nicely but uh, I think it makes more sense to just um, treat the barrel um, you know from roughly about that point onwards so a little bit higher um, you know just as long as you can come back I mean it'll come back I think I'm going to focus to somewhere you know round about here um, so you can, deal, you can deal with that I mean but using the affinity up here as we all will be for anamorphics you could just do the barrel up to that point really um, because you shouldn't be going further back but it depends whether you ever want this to be reutilised in its original form of being able to slide all the way back in which case if you do then obviously think about that when you uh, treat the inner barrel so there's a number of areas we need to treat on um, a lens like this if we want to deal uh, with the reflections on the inside so this is about dealing with the light reflecting about and doing the uh, uh, white vignette that a lot of people find uh, you know in the now some basically so you'll see here you've got reflection here on this front ring which holds in the glass you then on the inside you, can, you should even be able to see it you'll be able to see it, definitely see it there um, this is kind of a kind of a grooved um, feel to it and it, it reflects and again this is really tricky to paint if it, if it were just a, a flat surface then great you could you know you can maybe just paint that in you know a couple of coats and it's done but because it's at different different heights there it can take an absolute age and then you've got to worry about oh, well I've got the lens there you know how, how can I avoid not getting um, getting paint on that obviously if you do you can kind of you, you can generally wipe it off but I kind of like to avoid getting any um, on there in the first place if I can so that's why I like the, the flocking material <coughs> So we've got the same issue here, all, especially the grooved bit, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's really reflective um, and annoyingly these all tend to have a, a grooved area right down here at the real barrel, this 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 portion right, and that's reflective as well. So you've just got areas all the way down the entire barrel that will bounce light about and um, give you that um, light uh, vignette that people generally don't seem to desire <coughs> so this is how we go about dealing with it I tend to uh, use a guillotine to cut sheets of so you get I've got a big two of it I have tons of this stuff so you can see how much flocking I've done because it feels like I've not got tons of it anymore but um, yeah it's uh, this material here it's, it's very thin um, but it's totally matte no light comes off this um, and it's got some guides down here that sometimes aid a bit to cut it but there's so many areas with the uh, text on it's not that great because I would originally try to start doing these things with scissors but uh, yeah it's not ideal so what I like to do is cut a section of this so that I can guillotine it we need um, off the top of my head it says notes I made last time we'll see how accurate they are that we need about 15 centimeters to deal with this front piece um, I wonder if this one's a little bit deep because I noted the depth down as depth is about one centimeter but that, to me that looks that looks more on this, let's have a look oh, I ordered some rulers off Amazon but plastic ruler's great what do you think it's a floppy, I mean who wants a floppy ruler? that sounds a bit like innuendo <laughs> have you got a floppy ruler? let's have a look, can I see even? Oh, it's a rubbish ruler it's a rubber that a, a ruler that's wobbly, and they've made it so it's very very difficult to read what's on there. Actually, it, a centimetre mark actually wasn't far off. It's about that. It might be just uh, 
if you want to be pedantic, it's, it's probably uh, 11 millimeters. So we know we need uh, about 16 centimeters. So this piece here, top bit, I can see is uh, enough. So I'm just going to start by cutting that little bit off, and then I can work with it. I'm a little bit wasteful with this. I, I don't really, because obviously I've got such a big uh, piece of this for telescopes, and I don't really worry about being too. You know, chopping bits off and dealing with it and if I end up with some off cuts throwing them away but if you end up with a, a smaller amount then obviously you'll have to be a little bit more careful so th this is going to be what we're going to do is we're going to cut that down so it can be for that for our front so we're reckoning um, in height I have to guess and guesstimate it here because it doesn't have an up and down um, height which in a bit annoying but there we go so I kind of I, I tend to find the uh, uh, width of that's about about a centimetre so I'm hoping if we go over this we'll end up with something closer besides all this slightly over but let's try it and see how we go as a first attempt so this is going to be a little long but I'm not too worried about that yet because I'm just going to test it for height to begin with so Put that in there. Oh, boom, spot on. Uh, bring this a little bit closer and then you should be able to see. Yeah, it's, it's sat in there. That's obviously something that we need. It doesn't really matter if you have a little bit of overlap, but I kind of like to minimise that. So, let me see this first. Just want to make sure it's material. So, did say, I made a note on my mobile phone, let's just check. 15 centimetres by one centimetre is what I'd reckon last time, so. 15 centimetres is around here. Probably this one would be a little bit over. But I've marked it there, so. It's kind of better to be a little bit over a little bit under because obviously if you're a little bit under you've got a gap then you, you're going to have to start again and besides all that I'll probably what I've done now but let's just see so you test it first when you put this in loosely even if you press it back with your fingers it often feels like you've got a lot more than really you have and when you actually press it in and down um, yeah I wonder though maybe the diameter on this is different to the last one I've done there's actually um, you can see there there's quite a bit of overlap so I can actually cut down this, this some more. But say so do bear in mind when you would when you press this in for it to stick it on, um, that's going to be even tighter. So so never oops, never try and get it entirely exact because you'll you'll almost inevitably uh, take too much off and then you'll have to start again. So It's coming in just over 13 centimetres on this one. That's even looking to me like it's going to have a couple of millimetres overlap. I mean, that's sort of 13, one and a half. So, again, you don't have to be this pedantic, but I want it quite close. I just think it looks neater, but I will kick myself if I take too much off and end up with a gap, which is what I'm very close to do, uh, uh, doing now. Let's let's give it a go. Fingers crossed. Now the nice thing about this is um, before it's set, it takes a, a, a little while. I think probably a couple of hours before the glue really starts to stick. So. If you put this on, it ain't right, you can just peel it straight off, do, and do yourself another cut. Or even if you place it slightly wrong, you know, as long as you haven't pressed it on too hard, and you can peel it off and then re resettle it down again, so it's quite handy to know. So, there, you see, if I've, I haven't pressed it yet, I've just settled it in. So let it, let it settle in first, and then start pressing it. Gradually go around. Uh, make sure you're not, you know, you're keeping the height the same if you can. 
So what we're trying to do is we're pressing that against the metal inside. And to be fair, I should have worn uh, latex gloves for that bit really, because I I could have slipped and put my finger on the uh, lens there. And you don't want greasy fingerprints on there. I mean, I will give it a a wipe later anyway, but. You know, if you can avoid getting fingerprints on there, then do so. So we see, but I've got that on. Uh, bit round. I, I, I've, I've got there. I've got like a very slightest line there uh, in between. Um, it's not even a millimeter. I'd have preferred being pedantic just to let that just overlap the slightest bit, but. No issue really. If you spin that round, you can see where well, we had tons of light reflecting before. We've uh, dealt with that now. In fact, just because um, I'm a perfectionist, really what I should do is just take that off and do it properly. I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been quite so uh, overzealous in the first place, but I have got. Alternative to a, a paintbrush is this acrylic paint. It's kind of got paint in there and it comes out. But it's, I'm not sure they're the best thing in the world either, but I just want to make sure there's no reflection at all. So that's just to get the other metal be, behind. So even though it was only tiny and less than a millimetre, I don't like reflections! So it's sweat at the moment, but that 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 that'll dry and matter colour. See if I get that right on there, you can see just that slightest of line, um, and we don't want any reflection. Reflection is evil. And if that doesn't deal with it, then I am going to be taking it off and putting it back on. So yeah, so that kind of proves the point really of when you press it in that even if you think you've left a bit of overlap, you'll find often you haven't. So yeah, better to uh, leave a little bit of overlap than be uh, absolutely, uh, I'll try and be absolutely perfect about measuring it. Um, you'll just give yourself more work to do as I demonstrated very well there. So that's the entire front bar done. And to be honest, even if you just did that, that would be a, a good improvement to start with. Now this bit, I would consider totally optional. This has been a, um, A, you put in your glass at risk, you know, it's being more pedantic, but we've got the, the, the front piece of plastic here, oh, sorry, it's not plastic, it'll be metal, but it's kind of got a kind of, the kind of reflectivity that you'd often see with kind of a glossy plastic look. Um, it's the way it just looks to me. Um, but yeah, I think it's a metal ring with a, it's been painted quite glossy. Um, it gives a little bit of friction. To be honest, on, on this particular lens, it's not that bad. Usually it's far, far worse. Um, but for the sake of showing you, which I have done, I want to be on the tutorials, but uh, this one's all about this particular issue, so I might as well capture it all here. So this is a lens tool, so it's basically it's uh, two prongs, almost like two flat screwdrivers, um, and you're using it to go into these, uh, basically these little slots, there's one there, and there's one over the other side turn it counterclockwise. These are for holding the glass in but it's not really holding the glass in because actually the glass goes in and then it's glued into place and then this is secured over afterwards. But you, you if say for lens, I don't know if it's particularly old, maybe it's been dropped or whatever, um, you, you can have the case and I never found it with the front but I have found it with the back where actually the glue is no longer holding it and it's just been held by the ring in which case you'll create yourself another problem with this because if it's already aligned, you wouldn't want to be having to deal with uh, the glass being loose. So, I should add, when you do this, usually just turning it for a moment will loosen it. So you don't need to do it all the way around. So I tend to just loosen it and then do it with my finger, then there's no opportunity to scratch the lens. Um, but I just wonder what I was going to say then, because I kind of, uh, I was on one track and then I've changed. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I don't worry too much with the, with the, the fronts, uh, as I've never had an element loose there, so this bit I don't consider a risk, but the, the rear one, 
I consider more of a risk. You might think, oh well, I'll do from the south the rear, but it's, it's entirely your choice. I mean, you can deal with it, but it's just obviously it's if something goes wrong, you just got a lot more work, a lot more panic, and it depends on how much your lens is worth and how much patience you've got and how many tools you've got to deal with things. This is where people do the, the Sharpie trick, just, just as it's called, just by doing the front. But the trouble is the lens comes up over this uh, ring. So you can only ever get a bit of it. So you're never solving the problem. So that's why I take the ring out. So there we go. So you can hopefully you might be able to see. So you, obviously outside they've got the threads in because that's it. It's screwed in, and that's your inside. And if I, you see, you'll, you can see here that ring of light. So it just demonstrates just how shiny this is. So you can paint this. Um, there seems to be a lot of debate about paints. I mean, some people said use acrylic paint. So I have got some of that, and it it, it works with this kind of thing. Just put it on lightly, let it dry and then do some more, it takes ages to dry that bit of a pain. I've got some matte metal paint here, I forget, don't know if that's any good either, but I've got it to try it on things anyway, but I've never bothered doing anything on that because the credit's fine. Or again, I can just I can use this. Um, the thing with this is it dries quite quickly. It's just drawing like a pen. You, you won't be able to see this too well because in fact my hands are between the, the camera and me doing this but I just want to get it done. The only thing I think with these um, pens that kind of paint the paint on, I don't think it's quite as robust, you know, i.e. if you got your, if there was some pressure on this, something scraped against it, I think it would come off a lot easier than proper paint but it's actually let me see it's actually matting already you know you haven't got that sharp line of light that we had before in fact if you see it at the bottom there it's only at the bottom where I haven't painted it so we've almost already in just a uh, one use of the pen got all of that I think here I can even see like a reflection so one little bit that I missed so I'm just going to grab that with a pen it'll be shiny for a minute just whilst it uh, dries on spinning it. Just one more cap there, it was like maybe could do with a little bit more. And what I normally do with this actually is I will let that dry and then I will do a second coat. Um, but if that's all together, it, it's all together better even already. It's, it's definitely diffusing it and a couple of coats of that and it's coming in all nicely matted. So that's the front one done. We're going to do the rear one on this, even if it is going to be a nightmare. And if it all goes horribly wrong, but hopefully it won't. Um, but if it does, you can laugh. Main thing is, get this out to the edge so you're not going to slip it on in the glass. Do you be wary sometimes though of pushing too far out? See, some of these you can almost touch the outside, so you kind of ground it, ground it against the uh, um, threads, which you don't want either. But yeah, the main things: flat surface, hold it steady. You know, put some pressure downwards, just enough, but not go crazy. And that's it. Just even a little turn, then it's done. So that's actually been totally stress-free at this point. Doing my fingers now. The nice thing is here, it's not turning in the glass, so we know that the glue's held on that, which is good. So, say you wouldn't expect it to be loose, but I have had one where it happened, so I'll never rule it out. And again, I should have really been wearing my uh, gloves for this because my hands are getting quite close to the length of the 
and worried about this one too much because I was going to give it a, a clean later on anyway. Um, so there we, we have the same thing again, the ring, so let's get the paint pen, yay! And, uh, Just imagine and there's going to be a few blokes watching this with their puzzled wives walking in and going why is he watching some bloke with a pen taking lenses apart and, hmm should be thinking right he's really sad I don't believe I married this bloke watching YouTube videos like that but anyway we all know it's about the lens flare it's about getting looks, creativity. It's been different to all those people with the super sharp lenses that all look exactly the same. So, there we go. In, in very little time, we've got this one done. I could say I'll put that dry and then do another coat. And with anything, whether it's a you know, pen like this or whether you're getting a proper uh, paint brush and, and using some paint. Don't try and get it all done in one coat quickly round, you'll, you'll, it'll never really happen and if you keep slapping uh, paint on you'll just make it worse, so it's better to do one thin coat, let it dry, do it again, you'll, you'll thank me for that advice. Right, so we, we know we've got both of the those rings sorted, we've dealt entirely with the front barrel and that's just a breeze, I'm just so happy, I just don't want to do any more at this point, because this is where... It gets hard and I don't like I think I don't like it being tough. Uh, so we, you've got two challenges here. Obviously there's this initial inner barrel. This is bigger, so that's not so bad. Um, and I hate the, the, the barrels here. Um, you, you've got you've got two issues. As you can see here, this one slopes down and they're the worst. So a slope like this, you can't realistically flock it. So for the inside of that you can either ignore it because it is it is quite a minor part of the barrel but you're still going to have some light reflecting so I like to I generally paint that so I'll, I'll either use a genuine brush and paint or um, I'll, I'll use this um, pen method but either way I'll put a coat on it just to, to reduce that I never bother trying to flop that it won't be impossible but it, it's tricky enough um, dealing with the rear bit here and obviously the narrower this is the more fiddly it is to get in with your finger and, and uh, press it in. Um, but hell, we're going to do it. We'll see what happens. So, alright, the, the thing is here. I don't really know what the diameter is for the back there or, or what it's going to be. I wonder if that 15 centimetres. The 15 centimetres I jotted down actually must have been the back here. I mustn't have jotted down the front. So that'll explain. That's probably why that's 13. This is probably 15. That is going to be my guess. And we've got enough flocking material, so if my guess is wrong, we'll just cut some more. So let's let's see what this is dealing with. Oh, we've got 20 centimetres here, so let's have a look. Let's see what that looks like. Yep. Tons more than enough, so we know it's far less than uh, 20 meters, 20 centimeters. Um, right, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be too uh, crazy, so I'm not going to go straight down to 15, which I think it'll be. We'll go down to about 16 centimeters. Give myself a little bit of leeway. Testing the thickness here to see if we're about right. So that comes in under. So yeah, what's going to be way too long? Um, I think what I generally do here is I put the, I pop down about that, um, and I think really I ought to be in a bit narrower because the lens won't go all the way back, or it will, but you know it'll be a little bit sticky for that. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking just under a centimetre, but um, let's just see how it looks to begin with for the diameter. 
there we go, it's looking close, so it is looking like that is about 15. But I'm going to leave a little bit over with this, so I want to, I want to get it again. I'm being pedantic, I'm trying to get it close. I'll do it, try and do it 15, what, 15 with a, an extra millimetre there. I could have probably just done with it. some sort of craft knife um, just to mark it a little bit better rather than just trying to mark it with a screwdriver because it's not it's not that effective. So I think that's gonna be very close, maybe a tiny tiny bit of overlap. I would be a little bit more concerned with um, overlap here just because you've got the, the inner barrel against it so if we can minimise that so I think I am going to be reckless and try and take another millimetre off to help I don't regret it. And, uh, annoyingly that, that's looking close to two millimetres. It is so slow, you know. I did end up taking off. Slightly, 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 slightly too much. Bah! So, I don't know what to do here. Do I? Do I? Yeah, I'm going to do it right. We should not cut corners. Again. I'm at, I've gone over by two millimetres and I'm going to take off one and probably take off two. And I think I've got it right. I need to just get this out out of my system where I'm just thinking, I want it perfect to the, to the, uh, most microscopic amount is like no don't you don't have to be that perfect and it just causes yourself more height so yeah I think that's right but the issue we've got here is we're gonna have to get this in um, to the point here um, using our fingers and that's just no fun at all so I'm gonna do it because I've got to do it Oh, I've got no fingernails, so that's another joy of trying to separate this from the backing. There we go. So what I do first is I roll this up a bit. Don't like stick it harshly together or anything, because you need you need this to come to get come off. But I, I like to put it in loose, so it's it's narrower than the uh, the width we're trying to get into, so that I can sort of drop it in get it as far into the lens as I need it and then I can press it against the side. So obviously with the camera, it's dark inside the lens, I'm not going to be able to show you as I, as I get in, you're just going to have to understand what I'm doing. So I'm basically, I'll do it, I'll show from this because it's easier to show from, uh, uh, I'm just getting it smaller than it needs to be so that I can slide it down to the height that I want to and then I'm going to press it out on my fingers again. But this is why working in the rear, the rear of the barrel is just far less fun. I don't have a better word. It's just generally stress. You just say, hey, you've just got to take your time. Just, just be chilled. Put on some music you like, whatever. And you can actually see the uh, kind of the groove surface. So you can just look at that and use it as a guide. The main thing to do is you, you're trying to get it um, so that it's straight all the way around because it, it'd be quite easy just to get it um, start at one height and then by the time you've gone full circle you've slipped up or down the lens and that's what you don't want. Based on that, I've, I've actually just got off the, just a minor amount and I'm probably not going to be pedantic enough to get just below that on this one. It's That's very close. Um, 
So the problem with your cards, you can't just keep peeling this off and sticking it back because you just you're gonna lose the stickiness and that's not gonna be good. So let me try that. Yep, yeah, and you'll see it'll, it'll even it'll even go all the way back now. As you come back by there, it is touching the uh, materials. So it gets a little bit stiffer for that. So I don't think the focus quite even when you look at the focus markings I don't think you actually have to go back that far anyway so it's, it's not going to be an issue for anyone but uh, yeah if you ever thought it was an issue you could cut that even narrower but the, the point is this is this lens is going to be used at infinity so it's always going to be there so even with that that we've put in at a centimetre there's still technically a bit of barrel there that's going to be potential for a bit of light you, you, when you're looking at it this way you actually you can't see it so it is a very minor bit, so I don't think it's going to have that much impact, but do keep that in mind. If you are only ever, for the rest of your life, going to use something, and I think most of us probably are, it's on a morph, e camera, you, you could then just say, well, actually, sod it, I'm going to take it right up to all the shiny, grooved bit, and because this will this will still slide in, as you've seen already with the uh, flocking material there, so even if that was coming up to to hear um, it make no odds so the choice is really yours I'm just trying to be um, over perfectionist on this just thinking about oh, what if someone doesn't want to uh, use it as an uh, anamorphic take it lens and they'd want it to still fully function on the uh, focus all the way back so that's why I've, I've taken that approach now that leaves us with the very end of the barrel and what do we do I've I've had two approaches um, with this one I've done with my lenses. I've either thought sod it and leave it as it is because it's only a small amount, but you can see it's definitely having an impact. So really, you don't want to leave it. Um, I have used uh, uh, old type of paint because it's grooved though. It's it's just a hassle. It doesn't work. So again, the only way you're going to deal with that. Um, and genuinely done it all is to flock it and it's just not fun because that's at the very end of the lens so I'm going to do it because we started so I might as well finish um, but yeah I'm not going to enjoy this now according to my notes before that was 11 centimeters and because I'm getting close to the lens Put on my surgical gloves when people walking past will think, What's he doing? Is he, a, is he a serial killer? Is he a murderer with those gloves? But it's no, I am just playing with lenses. Right, so, um, yes, we have gloves, we have fucking material spare, excellent. We know we need about 11 centimetres. There we are, so this is about, uh, this is just, I think a millimetre and a half over 11 centimetres. Uh, and I have got the challenge now that I've got gloves on, it's even more difficult to peel these apart. Oh, 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 and it wants to stick to the gloves. Maybe I shouldn't have done gloves after all. You see, you can't win. You can't win. There's always something in life wanting to get you. Yeah, and it also means that I could have adhesive on the gloves anyway, so I probably might as well have just not bothered with the gloves and just thought, I'll wipe the lens afterwards if I get any fingerprints on. So in fact, that's what I'm going to do. Or is it? Mm, yeah. Get rid of one. Yeah, my measurement's not right. I think we need actually uh, a couple of millimetres over 11 centimetres for this one. Could be dodgy measurements taken over last time, or it could just be that between brands there's slight variations in, in widths. So when you get down this, this thing, 
I'll give you a look here if you can get the, yeah, it's already sliding. You're lucky if you can slice it, but the gods are, are blessing me today. It has worked. That's it's a lie, the gods aren't blessing me today. This morning, I actually had a nightmare. I've never had a nightmare like this in my life. But I was being attacked by these huge kind of, there was some combination between a, a fly and a spider and it was about to bite me on the leg. And I literally, in my sleep, jumped out of the bed, hit the wall, bashed myself on the radiator, came to, and I couldn't even get up because in this jump out, I kind of rolled myself into some kind of human caterpillar stuck inside of my duvet and I was pinned between the bed and the wall. So that took me a bit of a time to get out of. I just thought it's a pretty good job I'm not having a heart attack now because I would be stuffed. So there you go, an insight into my nightmares. Just get it now enough so that you can it will drop in and yet at the same time making sure that you can split it apart and get it to stick again. You kind of don't want bits hanging off because it'll stick. Never swear to the side before you get there, but just an absolute faff. This is this is the worst bit of it all, though. Once you once you got this done, you can celebrate. So yeah, I recommend definitely have yourself a bottle of beer, somewhat ready. Don't have it before because it won't make your life easy, but. Have it there ready to celebrate at the end for getting this bastard thing done. You can see that it was, they see it at the end here, it was it's a slight bit over, a little slight bit over, like by about a minute, millimetre or so. So just press that against the side and it sawed it out. So that's actually, that's actually nicely done now. So we have actually got this flogged. So one, two, three. So we, we could just yeah, say that's enough and uh, have a pint and celebrate. But I'm going to, again, you can do this with a uh, paper, some paper to be very, very careful. And as I say, one coat and then another. But for the sake of this, I'm going to use my uh, acrylic paint pen. So what I'll do is I'll just let that dry, give that another coat, but that's going to be totally matte when that finishes. So we're going to have a matte lens all the way through, which is going to be fantastic for controlling unwanted light. So I'll put it there roughly as you see. So that's your complete anamorphic. So we had an anamorphic that was beaming light here, there and everywhere and it no longer is doing so. So that's going to have a lot more contrast uh, and you're going to get rid of that failing light that everyone seems to hate. I mean, it's okay if you just got a blast of light straight on for a moment. Um, you even see it with some uh, movie cine lenses but uh, I know with some of these lenses you can just be outdoor at daytime, uh, normal shot and um, You've got that uh, white glow around the edge, so I can understand why it uh, winds people up. So, but there we go, we've uh, we've done it. So all you would have to do, and there's obviously there's loads of other tutorials for this, and I might even do some at a later date. But it is just a case of putting it back together. So it's uh, um, obviously you put the uh, little brass slots in whatever they're called. Um, you then screw it back in, and like I say, if you have damaged the screws, get some new ones. Um, and then once you put all that in, um, you don't fasten these in uh, solid, just put them loosely to begin with, and that's then so that you can uh, tune the focus, because in unscrewing this, it could just be a little bit off, you know, even um, you know less than a millimetre um, left to right here, and it will be off. Um, but actually dealing with that isn't as tricky as you think it is. Um, but I will have to deal with that separately for the for this tu uh, for this tutorial. It's enough to take in today, 
um, just dealing with that. But yeah, uh, in essence, you put this back together, re-grease it, put the focus ring back on, screw it back together, job done. It's not as scary as, as you think it is. Um, but yeah, it is going to take some patience. Especially for the for the inside there. But if someone comes up with a, a slicker way of doing this, or, or maybe some way of doing it with a, some bits of that with paint that are easy enough, then then great. Uh, tell me how and do do your own video and demonstrate. But I just think flocking is just great for the fact that it deadens the light entirely. Although as you saw then, some moments of that were a faff. Uh, it would be more of a faff, I reckon, with paint. Um, so there you go. It, job done and a relatively clean job uh, and I should have added um, what I would do before I put that back together is um, because I haven't been wearing uh, gloves all the time is there'll probably be a fingerprint or two in there is uh, uh, get that clean so I use some uh, Zeiss fluid there and a uh, lint free uh, microfiber cloth and just wipe that off uh, and then give it a blast um, in fact, uh, that other thing, whilst obviously with opening it up, that's a good thing you can do. If there's any dust in there, you can give it a blast and uh, get it out. So you can end up with a lens that's uh, as good as new almost. But there you go. I hope you found that useful. And I hope you didn't mind me uh, witchering on too much. And I hope you're not getting strange looks from your wife from having watched this uh, video with a man taking a, a lens apart, talking about flocking repeatedly. Right, uh, catch you all later. Bye.